it's that motherfucker Jamal Murray that will send you home, and, I, and I'm a victim of it, you know? And he just makes plays. He, he, it's a sense of calmness when the ball is in his hand, and they're, and they're working that, that, either that side, clear side, one five pick and roll, or that mid pick and roll, or that angle pick and roll, where he either handling and Joker setting it, or he's playing touch game to Joker, where he has the, he could come off full speed. He has the ability to go back door. He's so shifty, the step backs, going right. You know, it's not, you can't even, you can't even dictate which way, you know, you know how you can see, okay, this guy shoots better going this, this way. This guy shoots off the dribble going this way. Well, he hit two game winners on us in the series. One was a step back going right, other one was a step back going left. So what, do you, what the fuck do you do? And yes, we could have played the last one a little bit better defensively, uh, but that's a, that's a different story. And then to add on to those two guys, Michael Porter Jr. is a fucking laser. I don't know if it's just because he sees the Lakers or the, the gold or whatever, I feel like versus that motherfucker don't miss. He does I not call, miss. I, I called the one game where he literally did not miss. In, in <laughs> yeah, in LA, <laughs> he literally did not miss. He literally did not miss. And I, I, I was like, man, this, these, you, you can't even get. You know how they say, close the gap, get to his chest. He, he doesn't even see you. He doesn't see you. And then those, those other two guys, man. You, you got KCP out there, a guy who just who's just a winner who makes winning plays. He can have zero points, he can have 15 points, and he's gonna make, excuse me, make an impact on a game. And the same with Aaron Gordon. You know, Aaron Gordon, if he has two points, or if he has 20 points, his impact doesn't change. He's gonna rebound, he's gonna stay, he knows his role, he's gonna be in a dunker, he's gonna slash from the baseline, you know, he's gonna guard. Um, I just think they're, they're super uh, well, well, well um, organized as a group, and then um, obviously, you know, their, their, their coaching staff is, is, is pretty damn good on knowing, you know, what their strengths, and they go to their strengths. They avoid their weakness. You know, they avoid their weakness. It's not many. See, the difference between great teams, good teams, and bad teams, is to how many possessions can you go throughout the course of the game that meant absolutely nothing. Meaning, a great team won't go through too many games where they had terrible possessions where it was like, what the fuck are we doing? Where a, a, a great team would never throw the ball into the post to a guy and we're gonna expect him to score if that's not what the fuck he do. A great team would never run a pick and roll with a player if he's not a pick and roll player. That's where the great, the good, and the bad lies. Denver, they know what their strengths are. And it's not nobody on that floor that does something that they shouldn't be doing. And I, I think that's what makes, I think that's what ultimately makes a great team. Doc Rivers always talks about basketball as a game of mistakes, right? And, and it is. Yep. Like, th it there's is. not a, per there's, I, I get killed for saying this, but I'll stand by this. I don't think there's ever been a perfect player.